Hello, welcome to lesson 10 strings in C sharp brought to you by Ankpro Technologies. My name is Arish. In this session, we are going to learn what is a string and how do we construct a string and what, what are the operations you can perform on strings and finally the array of strings. String builder will learn in the coming session. To jump into strings, we will move into the next slide. Strings. Strings are a collection of character. It means that strings represent the group of characters. To tell in simple, a character can be can be an alphabet and that collection of alphabets togetherly we call it a string. And C sharp introduces the string type. The point is string type is a reference type. In the previous session we discussed that data types are classified into two things. They are value type and the reference type and string falls under the reference type. What do you mean by reference type? It means that string does not store its value directly. It means that if you create a string variable and if you store a value to it, it does not store the value directly. Instead, it stores the address where the value is being stored. For example, you are going to store in a, uh, in a variable uh, a sentence called hello world. But keep in mind, string does not store the value hello world directly. Instead, it stores the address where the value where the hello world is being stored it just stores the address where the value that is hello world is being stored that is the meaning of the third sentence third point that is string type is reference type and using string it allows you to manipulate the character data through methods and properties it means that strings are having the certain properties and methods which allows us to manip manipulate whatever the value we store in the string to understand it very clearly we'll jump into coding and the second thing is now we are going to learn how do we construct a string it's very simple right now we'll jump into coding here i've created a console project named strings now here I'm going to show you how do you construct a string. It's very simple. You just create a variable called a and the return type of it is string. That is data type is string. And now I'm having the variable a. Now I want to store value to it telling the value is a low world. This is the value what I'm going to store in the variable a of data type string. Now, if I want to print this hello world in the console, I'll use console dot write line, console dot write line function to do that work. And once I'm done with this, I'll pass the variable called a to it. It means that now I'm having a variable called a and the return type of it is string and the value we assigned to that variable is hello world and now I am printing that variable since I am printing that variable the value is stored in the variable that is hello world is stored in A now once I run this program I will get the hello world on my console window this is how how do you construct a string this is how you just initialize a variable and make sure the return type you are going to give it a string and store the value and just print it on the console. This is how, how do you construct a string. We'll jump back into the presentation and now we'll learn the operations of strings. To understand that, we'll jump into Visual Studio. I'm having a piece of code which explains you the operations of strings. Here is the project of the operation of strings. Now I'm setting it as my startup project. I'm opening the program in it. And here you can see I'm having a piece of code where which explains you clearly what are the operations on string. To do that, pre, what I've what I've done is I've created three strings. String one, string two, and string three are the variables, and they are all having the return type string. And I've assigned the value to the first string as when it comes to .NET programming, C sharp is number one, and the st second string also contains the same same value and the third string it contains the value as C sharp strings are powerful now why I've given the same values to it just before just because we'll come to know when I explain this piece of code lying below now before doing that I would like to initialize some variables string up and string low means I'm just going to show you the methods to upper and to lower these are the operations which are going which are which we are going to perform 
and I also have uh, initialized two variables result and idx it means index and return type of it, them as int and string up and string low return type is string now in this two lines of code what I'm trying to do here is in the first line I'm just printing the string one I'm calling that variable and console.write line is going to print that variable the value in that variable on the console window and the second point is I'm going to find out the length of the string keep in mind string one dot length it means length is the property which shows you or gets you the number of characters in the current string it means that since I'm passing string one it's going to identify the number of characters in the string one now we'll just clearly understand these two things now when I run this program it has to do two things just forget out forget about the below code it has to print only these two things okay it has to give the output for these two things what it has to give us it has to print this value and it has to count the number of characters in it means it has to find out the length when I do that I was it's scanning my file once it is get scanned it, it is done just you can just observe what it is trying to do in the first line is just printing the string has it just printed the value in the string one it has printed when it comes to dotted programming C sharp is number one and the second is we are we are using the length property of the string and it has it has found out the length of the string one that is 44 the length of the string is 44 characters it is having the 44 characters in the string one okay now we understood the first two part of the first two lines of this code means the output of this two lines we understood now we'll next move into other piece of code here what I'm trying to show you is I'm trying to show you the operations that we can perform on the string it means that in this piece of code I'm going to show you how do you convert a string into uppercase and lowercase for that as I previously initialized two variables called string low lowercase and string uppercase that is string low and string up now I'm just using the string one and when I do that this is my string one variable and when I press a dot and I'll just type two now I want my string two in the lower case therefore I'll use two lower keep in mind this is the method in the string variable in the string class we have a method called two lower what it does it just converts the current string into lower case and if you want to convert the current string into uppercase you just use two upper method and I'm just printing these, these two variables such that we'll just see the output and output is as expected which you can just observe here it is in the lower version of the string one means it is a lower case it is printed the same thing means it is converted into lower case and in the upper case you can observe all the characters in the string one are com converted into upper case this is the use of two methods upper two upper and two lower methods in strings and we have another piece of code which just compares the string and provides output here what I'm trying to do here is I'm, I'm trying to compare the three strings that is string 1 string 2 string 1 string 3 and this piece of code you can easily understand it just can compares the strings and provides you the output to understand that we'll just press ctrl F5 here you can observe yes, as we saw previously string 1 and string 2 have same values so it's printing string 1 is equal to string 2 and just one sec string 1 is equal to string 2 else con string 1 not equal to string 2 it has done as why it has not printed this is because string 1 and string 2 are equal therefore it has not printed this statement and next we are converting string 1 and string 3 keep in mind in this current, exa current example only string 1 and string 2 are equal therefore it's providing the output string 1 not equal to string 3 now we'll understand this piece of code now what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to compare two strings that is string 1 and string 3 and we'll just check out what is the output since string 1 and string 3 are not equal we'll just check out the output what we'll get yes. here what we are trying to do here is we are comparing the string based on the values it just prints me string 1 is greater than string 3 yes you can observe here 
the value means whatever the group of character string we called a string here the number of words are more and it's very less based on that it is telling us string 1 is greater than string 3 you can observe in the output string 1 is greater than string 3 and now assign a new string to string to string 2 previously in my in the above program in the string 2 the value is when it comes to dotnet programming c sharp is number 1 now what i am trying to do here is string 2 that is i'm changing the value of string 2 previously it has something now i am trying to give it as 1 2 3 1 here what i am trying to do here is i am trying to check the index of it means i am trying to check where the group of characters where the string is lying in this case i am trying to check where this one is lying that is one where this one is in which index it is now when i run this program i'll get the output as index of here you can observe in the output the index of first occurrence of 1 is 0 and the index of last occurrence of 1 is 14 it means that here in this program once I have changed the value of string 2 the value is 1 2 3 1 this is the value currently what's lying in string 2 now for that value in the string 2 what I am trying to do here is I am find I am trying to find out the index of 1 where it is at what place it is lying it means that string 2 dot index of in in this case i have to pass for which for which value for which word you want to check the index here i want to check the index of 1 then when i give the string here as 1 what this index method will do it will just find out where this one is placed it is placed at the zeroth at the zeroth place so it just provided me the output as zeroth index okay this is how we check the index of the value in the string and I'm having another method called last index of I'm having another method called last index of it means that you're having a string and you want to find the index at the last means here you can observe one is lying at two place at the starting at the end now I want to find out the index of the last one at that time you can use the method called last index of the current string that is 1 and it tells us from the last at the last index it is lying at the place 14 when I run this program I'll just give it gives me the output it is at 14 the index of last occurrence of 1 is 14 this is this is the operations of string you can just see here you have still methods and properties to explore once you finish with this you can just observe what what this what are these strings completely and we'll jump back into presentation now array of strings what is this array of strings we'll just jump back into presentation and explain now to understand array of strings previously in the previous session we just saw how to create an array similar way strings also can be stored in an array how to do that you can you can get an array of strings also that is possible how to do that just take string data type then take a variable called I'm taking a variable called str then I'm using new keyword to allocate memory for the array that is array name is str name or variable array name is str and new keyword is used to allocate memory for the array and now once I'm done with this I have to do and I have to specify the size and I have to specify the size that size is 4 I'll just give the size as 4 and in the first step what I've done is I've just created an array of size 4 and now I want to push values to that places that four places how do I do I how do I initialize I'll just initialize with the array name that is str and it and since since array stores values based on the index base and it always starts from zero and now I am assigning value to it this is I'll just copy these things
as this C sharp this is C sharp demo you can observe here in the first step we just initialized we just created an array of size 4 that is string this is an array of strings and the size is 4 and since array star always stores values from the index base that is from 0 integral indices it starts from 0 I'll, I'm assigning from 0 and till 3 because it's storing 4 values 1, 2, 3 and 4 once I've stored the values now my job is I want to print them on the console to do that I'll use for each loop as explained early the control statement what is for each loop for each loop var is a keyword and item is a variable I can use any variable I'll take k as variable and here as I said array is a collection of array is a collection and here the collection the array name is string therefore since array is a collection I have to pass that array here to iterate once what happen, what is the speciality of this for each loop it means that it tells us if you're having a collection give collection to me means for each loop tells us if anyone is having collection give me that collection here I'm giving the collection called array of strings to for each loop and what it does is it, it just iterate th through that collection and it stores all the values in the string in the string in the string array to its variable k now once it stores all the values from str to k it just prints from the console like this now I have to call that variable and once I'm done with this I'll just run the program you can observe this is C sharp demo it means that once I mean once again I'm running this program you can observe since since array also can hold string values can create an array of strings this is this is the example for this point that is array of strings you can create an array, array of strings also in this session we learn strings construction of strings operational strings and array of strings thank you have a great day please subscribe to anchor anchor training below